The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel Quick Summary with Spoilers Part 1. In 1999, Paul is expelled from school after accidentally providing drugs to a kid who subsequently died from it. Feeling extremely guilty, he tries to search for his half-sister, Vincent. Then in 2005, Vincent and Paul are employed at the five-star hotel Cayette. Following an incident regarding graffiti, Paul is asked to leave the hotel. This reservation belongs to a regular guest and owner of the hotel, Jonathan Alkaitis, that night. Years later, the night manager, Walter, learns that Jonathan married Vincent. Fast forward to 2008, Vincent is now 24 years old, and Jonathan is 58. Jonathan is a wealthy New York financier who exposes Vincent to a life of luxury from 2005 to 2008. Though they were not legally married, she lived as his trophy wife. Jonathan warns her about a woman named Ella Kaspersky, who is unstable and has been accusing him of fraud. Vincent befriends Mirella, whose boyfriend is a Saudi prince who invests with Jonathan. A few months before it all comes crashing down, Vincent meets Olivier, a former painter known for having only sold one significant piece, a portrait of Jonathan's deceased older brother, Lucas. Olivia is financially tied up with Jonathan. In part two, Jonathan is arrested in December 2008 and sentenced to 170 years in prison. It was during the meeting that he confessed to his daughter Claire and Vincent that he operated a Ponzi scheme. Claire called the authorities. He starts doing bartending jobs and other odd jobs working in kitchens. She then meets Mirella, whose boyfriend Faisal has died due to Jonathan's actions, and that causes Vincent to resign. In 2013, she finds a job as an assistant cook on the ship Neptune Cumberland. Meanwhile, in jail, Jonathan starts being haunted by the ghosts of Faisal and Yvette, who died of a heart attack due to financial ruin he had caused. Before Jonathan's arrest, Vincent learns that Paul has taken videos she made as a child, added music to them, and is now presenting these as his own work in performances of video and music for money. She's angry but knows Jonathan wouldn't want her making a scene about this. Part 3 returns to the events before Jonathan's arrest. It shows how, as financial markets become volatile, his fraudulent fund runs into a liquidity crisis. On the day of his arrest, he calls the 17th floor the asset management floor, where several people have knowingly participated in the fraud. The 18th floor conducts regular brokerage business. News of the liquidity crisis leads to chaos on the 17th floor. Enrico books a flight to Mexico and is gone, Harvey starts to type out a confession as Simone new secretary is instructed to begin shredding documents. Later that night, Jonathan is arrested along with several others. Ten years later, in 2018, Vincent goes overboard on the Neptune Cumberland. He hires Leon Provant, a consulting investigator whose finances have taken a hit since he lost his savings to Jonathan. Another investigation is conducted by Michael Saparelli from the security office. The main suspect seems to be Jeffrey, a man Vincent had been dating. However, Saparelli warns Leon not to write reports likely to lead to firings if he wants to get more consulting jobs. Leon doesn't incorporate this in the report and still doesn't get any more consulting business. During imprisonment, Jonathan sees a ghost of Olivia and finds out she's indeed dead. Meanwhile, it's revealed that Ella had been the one to ask Paul to graffiti a threatening message for Jonathan to find back in 2005. Years prior, Ella had caught wind of the fraudulent actions and tried to contact the sec herself to no avail. After Jonathan is taken away, the hotel shuts down, and Walter, the night manager, becomes the caretaker of the empty building. Over time, the remainder of those on the 17th floor serve their time and are released. One of them, Oscar, is returned to prison on a drug charge. The book concludes with Vincent going overboard from the ship, she sees the ghost of Olivia out there. She drops her video camera trying to catch it, which sends her overboard. As she goes down, Vincent flashes with visions, one with Paul, who accepts her as a ghost and apologizes for stealing from her, Vincent confesses too, her wrong action thus acknowledging that since the very beginning, something was wrong with Jonathan's fund. Finally, Vincent reunites with her mother who died in an accident when Vincent was 13. Themes and Messages
In the Glass Hotel, Emily St. John Mandel weaves together the lives of a few individuals, pitting memory, identity, and complicated links between them against a backdrop of financial ruin and existential precariousness. Instead of one straightforward storyline, this is a novel that coalesces into a narrative of fractured timelines each piece of dislocation akin to the dislocations of contemporary life, particularly those following the meltdowns of economies. It's a novel of choices and identity, whereby the characters struggle with their decisions taken in the past, often contemplative of how their lives veered off from different starting points. Vincent depicts this theme poignantly from a messed-up past to his glamorous figure in a luxury hotel showing fluidity in the identity. As Mandel says, identity is itself not an unmoving thing, instead, it is a product of our life conditions and choices. This can be a deeply profound assertion through the world filled with social media and public personas that occlude real selfhood and encourage the reader to inquire about what lies beneath the surface of outward appearances. Another strong theme is that of memory and its relationship to reality. Memories sometimes distort or amplify our perceptions of oneself and others. Characters are often burdened by their memories and feel disconnected from their current lives. Take Vincent and Paul, for example their pasts are entwined with each other, literally the idea that memories mold relationships and shape choices. Mandel effectively conjures how memory, besides being integral to identity, is also sullied by ambiguity and termed into question as well as makes one ponder upon the reliability of perceptions that characters and readers hold. Mandel also weighs in on the theme of greed and consequences, particularly from a financial crisis point of view. The novel critiques the often unseen machinations of wealth and the fragility of success that is embodied in the downfall of the Ponzi scheme orchestrated by Jonathan Alkaitis. In Alkaitis's Rise and Fall, Mandel uncovers the ethical rot capable of sharing an address with an unvarnished ambition, a heady pursuit of material wealth. The damage from his actions cuts well beyond the circle of his acquaintance, touching many lives and leaving ruin in its wake. This theme invites the reader to consider the ethics involved in their own pursuits and encourages them to think about the consequences for society at large when greed is the driver. Also, the Glass Hotel tends to celebrate a disconnection, both cultural and psychic. Many of the characters are lonely enough to flirt with despair, despite many interconnections. One can speak in similar terms to the hotel itself. One of the purposes of the hotel is to allow people to be surrounded by others, yet to be in solitude a glittery facade covering deeper vulnerabilities. Mandel indicates that people, even inside a high degree of activity around them, might feel very uncommunicative, fighting their battles in silence. This theme no doubt applies to today's society, which further illustrates the modern world as being digitally connected and yet highly inhuman.